Okay, hi everybody. I am Mrs. Hoyt um, from Bettendorf High School. I serve as the Future Ready Coach, um, and we are here for our next session of Sharing the Love for Healthcare Virtual Forum. Uh, right now, we're going to be talking about Prep Them Up, Surge Tech, and Paramedic. Um, so we have some wonderful panelists with us today to share more about the ins and outs of their career and how they got to their career um, and tons of other great information. Before we get on to their introductions, uh, just a couple housekeeping items. Students, if you could please put your name and your school um, in the chat so that we can keep attendance. And if we have any teachers on yet, which I don't know if we do, but if we do, if you could just put your school um, and how many students are in your classroom, that would be wonderful. Um, once again, I'm from Bettendorf High School. We have Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson, you want to wave? from Pleasant Valley. We have Lauren, where's she at? Oh, there she is from Davenport Schools and Mr. Schneider, if he's on yet from North Scott Schools. Um, so if you have any questions or follow-up questions once we finish today, we will be your contacts to get in touch with so that we can connect you with these lovely presenters um, who have more information to share with you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and turn it over to Jeremy. He is our paramedic today. Um, and Jeremy, if you could just uh, give us a quick little introduction to who you are, that would be great. Yep. Uh, my name is Jeremy Pessman. Uh, I'm a, param a critical care paramedic here at uh, Medic EMS in Davenport. I've uh, been in, in the EMS for 15 plus years. Um, started out as an EMT, uh, actually a volunteer out in La Claire. Uh, and then I got my paramedic and I got my critical care paramedic and, uh, and now I'm, I'm the fleet manager, uh, but I also go out on calls uh, occasionally as well. So. Awesome. I want to know what a fleet manager is when, after we hear about Darcy. So don't forget to remind me about that. Alrighty. Darcy, why don't you introduce yourself? I am Darcy Nia Fotis. Um, I'm a former surgical technologist. And I am a current assistant, so I'm a surgical first assistant um, for ORA orthopedics. Um, I was a surge tech for eight years, and I went most of my schooling all through Scott Community College. Okay. All right. So what, what is a surgical first assistant? I think we, we maybe are a little more familiar with surgical tech. So what's a surgical first assistant? It's very similar, except for instead of handing instrumentation and being responsible for um, sterile items, I'm more the second set of hands, so I stand across the table from the surgeon. Um, I hold the retractors, and I help them with the procedures, and then when the surgeon's done, I close. Okay. So I'm in charge of all the suturing. Wow, Darcy, that's amazing. <laughs> that's so Fun. cool. Wow. Okay. All right. So then let's talk about the fleet fleet manager, right? Jeremy, yep. what you said. so what is that? And then we'll have you tell us more about being an EMT, but what's a fleet manager? Yep. So I, I'm actually in charge. We have a fleet of 20 ambulances plus uh, three command vehicles and then two other support vehicles. So I have 25 vehicles all together. Uh, so on top of being a paramedic, critical care paramedic going out on calls, uh, I'm also in charge of uh, making sure that uh, every each of the 20 ambulances that we have in our fleet are running properly and get oh. properly maintained and and fixing them so wow uh, so yeah yeah you add that on top of the other stuff that I do so it's you're just it's just a bit busy that's what we keep saying yes. all of our presenters like holy moly how did you say yes to this because you are all <laughs> so busy um one other thing I want to point out before we have you jump into like what is an EMT, um, I just really hope our students are seeing with every group that we're talking to, we asked you all to be here for that maybe like more introductory um, career beginning um, job. Like I knew Darcy as a surge tech um, and then, you know, paramedic or EMT, but then like look at all the places that you go once you get that introductory position all of you have grown so much. So I hope our students are really seeing that like there is work ahead and you know, you guys have <laughs> lifelong learning and you're gonna keep building and growing. So anyways, off my soapbox. Um, so if you could talk to us a little bit about like what is an EMT and a paramedic and like, I know I'm a little nervous about like what's the differences. So could you just share a little bit more with that? Yeah, so I, I actually, when I first started, uh, I joined the fire department out in Claire as a volunteer. Uh, and I uh, quickly learned that most of our calls that we went on were medical calls. 
So, you know, they, were, they weren't fires, they weren't car accidents. A lot of them were people who had chest pain or difficulty breathing or, or diabetic issues. Uh, so I quickly re- learned that I wanted to become an EMT because that's what most of our call volume was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually started off as a volunteer EMT. Once I got my EMT, I was volunteering out in Leclerc. Uh, and I, so I started off making a dollar an hour, you know, as a volunteer. Uh, and then now, you know, move forward 15 years. Now I'm, I'm the fleet manager and I'm also in charge of uh, the A. EDM location, which is LeClaire, Bluegrass, and Eldridge. So um, I basically can, you know, manage the those lower volume operations uh, on top of the fleet and on top of one on calls. But right. uh, but as an EMT, um, mm-hmm. so the, the, the class time that's required to become an EMT, it's kind of your basic level, entry level. Um, if you want to work on an ambulance and get out and take care of patients in the community, uh, it takes about four months uh, or so. Uh, to get your EMT. Um, so like I said, that's your entry level position. Uh, you can do CPR, you can, uh, um, you can give aspirin, you can give nitro, patient assisted. Um, so there's, you're basically providing basic first aid, uh, you know, whether that's putting somebody on a backboard and splinting and uh, bandaging, you know, uh-huh. trauma type stuff. Um, it's that basic level of care that, that would include doing CPR. Um, so we have, you know, they always say that, you know, you have EMTs, you have paramedics. The ones that save lives are, are the EMTs that are doing the basic level stuff, like stopping bleeding. And um, if somebody's in cardiac arrest, you know, getting down and starting that CPR right away. Um, so that's uh, kind of the, the basic level EMT. Um, again, it takes about four months to become an EMT. Okay. Uh, there's some classroom training. Uh, for about that four months. And then there's also some clinical time. You have to go out and spend some, uh, a few shifts on the ambulance and a few shifts in the ER, just getting used to things and uh, taking patient vitals and stuff like that, doing assessments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, do you want me to go into paramedic? Yeah, yeah, well? that would be great. I don't know if she has a paramedic slide because I think we all just kind of need to know. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. so so your EMT, like I said, four months or so, basic level, you're going to do CPR, you're going to bandage wounds, stuff like that. Uh, the next uh, the next level is a paramedic. So a paramedic, you basically you have about a year's worth of classroom. So on top of that, you have to be an EMT first. Okay. So then when you want to be a paramedic, you have to go for an additional year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that also requires uh, an additional probably 600 hours of clinical and ride time. So you have to do a couple two to 300 hours of ride time on the ambulance. And then you got to do another two to 300 hours uh, of clinical time. Now that clinical time, a lot of it's in the ER because you're dealing with uh, basically any type of emergency situation you're going to deal with in the e- on an ambulance, you're going to deal with in the ER. So, uh, but you'll do, you'll spend time on the birthing unit. You'll spend time with respiratory therapists uh, in the surgical unit doing innovations. Um, so the primary difference when you step up into the, the paramedic level uh, is you have medications that you're going to give. So you might, if somebody's in cardiac arrest, you might give them uh, epi or atropine or different things you know, that, uh, that at the basic level, the EMT level, you're not going to do. Right. Um, they might um, put patients on a cardiac monitor and basically uh, interpret uh, EKG, EKG rhythms and uh, we'll do 12 lead EKGs in the field. Um, so it's kind of that upper level. It's a lot more in depth as far as medication give uh, procedures that you can, you can debate patients. Um, yeah, it sounds like start it. IVs, push medications. That's kind of that advanced level stuff uh, okay. that the paramedic would, would do. Okay. Uh, and then there's a there's a step further, the critical care paramedic, which is kind of all of that, uh, all of the same stuff. Uh, but then you're going to add uh, like art lines, central lines, uh, ventilators. So patients on the ventilator, uh, we can pick patients up from, say, Genesis East and take them to the University of Iowa uh, because they're on a ventilator. So that's where that critical care uh, steps up a little bit further. Uh, and there's other medications that we can give, additional medications that we can give that we you can as a paramedic. So. Wow. Okay. Wow. Thank you. I feel like I understand a little bit better now um, the differences between the three different levels. So then EMT, <laughs> yep. paramedic, critical care, and then so EMS, that's like, what does that stand for? 
Oh, did I Emergency medical services. So, so that's, that's basically like the ambulance service as a whole, you know, okay. EMS is. It's all becoming. Yeah, that's all now. of us. Okay. Yep. That's what I was hoping you would say. I'm like, if there's another <laughs> level here, we don't have enough time. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. Thank you for that. So Darcy, let's have you kind of talk to us. Um, maybe start with um, yep. Surge Tech, Darcy, and then uh, <laughs> then you can add in your next level too. Okay, well, starting out as... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Starting out as a surgical tech, um, you basically do all your general education classes through Scott or whatever community college you want to. There are certain schools that you can go to are, that are just for surgical technologists, but Scott has a great program. Um, there's also one for Blackhawk if you're an Illinois-bound student. Um, the program itself is about 16 months, um, depending if you want to get an associate's or if you just want your certification. Um, and then you do a clinical rotation to, um, you know, learn the skill. A lot of it is on the job training. You can read it in a book, but until you get your hands on it as a tech, it just doesn't really like connect. Um, and then it's awesome. Being a tech's awesome. I really, really enjoyed my job. I learned a ton of different specialties. And then from there, you have to be a surgical technologist for at least two, they prefer three years before you advance your education. And then you can go on to being a surgical first assistant. You could go on to be a PA if you choose so. There's just, it opens up a lot of medical doors. A lot of people that are surgical technologists go on to the nursing programs. All of our prerequisites for a surgical technology are the same as for the nursing program. So if you get your prereqs and you think, mm, I don't know, nursing's not really for me, Surge Tech is a really neat program to fall back on to get that base education and then go on. Okay. So that's now the, I think the third job that we've talked to throughout all of our sessions. Um, so <laughs> nursing, Surge Tech, and then we just talked to a respiratory therapist um, who all, everyone is saying like, just go get the prereqs done and yeah. then make the decision. So we don't need to worry. We don't need to stress. Like a lot of our students like to have things really mapped out and it's okay sure. if you don't. Okay, great. We'll add another one to the list, students. That's awesome. All right, so do you have more you wanna share about now the current position that you're doing? Um, it's just more in depth. So as a surgical tech, it's super important and it's a, it's a really intricate job that most people don't even know that we exist. Mm -hmm. You come in, the nurses bring you back and, and you have a lot of interaction with anesthesia and the nurses, but we're the people in the background that are setting up all of your instrumentation you'll need for the procedure and making sure that you're not gonna get an infection or the people that are giving you the right kind of suture for the right kind of um, tissue that we're dealing with. So after you learn that as a tech, then you can go on to a first assistant. And um, I just make, I close from fascia up. So from anywhere from open spine to um, a total joint, to just your basic dog bite. Um, I'm the one that makes sure that you don't have a horrible scar at the end. Wow, so that has to take a level of like art with it. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Wow, we have some really cool people here we're talking to you guys. That's so exciting. Um, okay, so I think, can you see the pictures on the screen, Darcy? Mm -hmm. So you, is that a broken finger? So the picture in the far left corner is a gunshot wound. Um, a, all the pictures I included were from incidents that happened to, to high schoolers. To high schoolers? Yeah, I tried to keep it in the 18 age and under range. Wow. So this particular gunshot wound, um, a child who was very um, gun savvy was cleaning his hunting rifle and it discharged. Um, and it went through his hand in the far left side by his pinky and then exited at the tip of his ring finger. And then the photograph world x-ray on the bottom is when you get mad at your brother or sister and you snatch him by the hand, this sister grabbed her little sister by the pinky. And so it's just dislocated. It's not broken. It's just dislocated. But it looks really neat. It looks broken. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wow. And then what's the one on the far side? So this is me and three of my, or two of my very, very dear friends. Um, is Jessica Villa. Oh, now. 
when we met, she was a tech and kind of was my Yoda. She taught me how to do what I do. In the middle is Emma Wilson, and she is now a RN in the ICU. And then there's me. I've become a surgical assistant too. And the whole helmet and the gown and the gloves garb is for a total joint. So if we were to replace your knee, your hip, your shoulder, your finger, um, we have to go full head to toe in, in sterility and PPE, personal protective equipment. Oh, wow. Okay. And then what's the last thing? Mm -hmm. Let me move this. Oh, okay. So, um, we had a young gentleman who car surfed, and I guess it's when you get brave and <laughs> the EMT is shaking his head. Like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you get on top of your car, which nobody thinks is a good idea, and another kid drives you, and eventually somebody falls. This kid fractured his femur, which it takes a lot of force. It's the longest bone in your body. It's the strongest bone in your body. And he ended up the... Uh -oh. dark rod down the shaft of the bone goes all the way from the start of your knee. The three cables that are around that rod are because the fracture was so unstable and it's a weight bearing bone. So you have to have that. And then there's an additional picture that shows kind of where the screws lock at the bottom and at the top near the femoral head to kind of keep everything stable so that it doesn't move when you walk. So bottom line is don't car surf and this won't happen. <laughs> you nailed Goodness it. Goodness <laughs> gracious. And then I feel bad. I didn't realize, uh, Mrs. Johnson, did Jeremy have some pictures of um, them in the field that I skipped over? I apologize if I did that. Maybe. I Hang can on. go back. Hang on. Okay. I think it was just an ambulance. Oh, okay. And, and then there was okay. a picture yeah. of Amanda. I think there was just a picture of them. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Just there. Were there actually? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, on scene. Cool. I mean, like, I really don't like gory, but I know students are here for a the, reason and they might like there's, it. So. There's a good chance with that picture. It was either A in the news or B, it was at a, at a, uh, we do Operation Prom or, you know, oh, and yeah. if we do photo ops, it's usually not a real patient. Yeah, unless it's exactly. the news taking it. Yeah, that's a good point, I guess. Like, let me pause your care here for a minute while I take a quick. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, my people are asleep, yeah, so I usually and they sign waivers. This is so funny. Mrs. Hoyt, okay. this might be a good time to talk that uh, Darcy did send us more photos, and if you're interested in all of that gory kind of pictures. We do have other resources, so you can see those. And Doc Rader is not happy we're not showing them right now. Come to my office later, students <laughs> or Doc Rader, Dude, and I'll show you. Well, I'll turn my computer around and show you. I started mild, and then I sent Gory separate. <laughs> Gory is awesome. Hey, Darcy, if you ever want to come just chat with my class, my students already know they have to have Gory. They don't have a choice. Yeah. It's going to I understand. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, what we're going to do with the rest of our time then is just talk through some questions and hear your answers. Um, I always like to remind students that um, we're just sharing our own personal thoughts on these things or your own experience. Um, so don't feel like you have to monitor it for like, is this how every, you know, EMT will feel this kind of thing. So just share your own feelings with us. Um, and then students, as always, if you have additional questions besides the ones that you already turned in, just go ahead and put those in the chat and we can go through those as well. Um, so I'm going to come back. That one's, We're going to talk about your craziest day in a little bit because I know you all have crazy <laughs> days. Um, why don't we start with um, how you guys are dealing with some pretty crazy things. So how do you separate the craziness that you deal with during your shift um, from like your home life and when you get a moment to relax? Like, how do you make that separation? Jeremy, you want to kick us off? Oh, sure. Um, well, obviously, as, as EMT paramedic uh, out in the field, uh, you do see a little bit of everything uh, from, you know, little kids that have passed away, adult, you know, you see it all. Um, yeah. One, probably one of the biggest things that we use to, you know, to decompress, we do uh, uh, basically, a, we have a meeting, you know, a decompression meeting afterwards that um, 
usually if there's something going on where we have multiple pediatric patients or multiple patients or something going on, uh, we'll, we will have a stress debriefing uh, usually pretty quickly after something like that, uh, where everybody that was on scene, the dispatchers, the fire department, the PD, the, the EMT paramedic, whoever was involved in that, uh, even in the ER, I'm sure doc, ER docs and nurses, anybody that was involved in that case uh, is invited to, to go and kind of decompress. And that's probably one of the biggest, one of the really good things that we do um, that kind of helps. The other thing is just time. <laughs> Over time, it just, I think that's probably one of the biggest things. You know, yeah. somebody brand new is definitely going to feel a lot better than somebody who's been doing it for 15 or 20 years. Mm -hmm. so. so that would probably be your best way that you guys deal with that tough stuff is just that yep. time to, the get debriefing. To, decom to decompress from it. Okay. Okay. Yep. How about you, Darcy? Um, I'm sure that we have, we have a great, HR department, and I'm sure if you felt like you needed to discuss it, but the OR in general is such a close, tight-knit group of people. They're the really, they're the ones that are kind of understand why you feel a certain way about a doctor or the way a case went or an organ harvest or why it's hard. The kids obviously are always a little bit harder, but just talking to to your friends, you know, they become your family and talking through the case or talking to the physician sometimes helps me understand like, what went wrong or did we miss something? Um, we don't, I have never had a deep connection. And I think that's kind of what's good about my job is I don't have that same nursing awake connection. I yeah. take care of your body. So it's kind of like you're a Toyota and I'm a Honda, but we all kind of run the same and I can fix your parts. <laughs> but I don't have to fix your hearts. You know what I mean? Oh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Someone write that so, down. I can fix your part. <laughs> I don't have to fix your heart. That's a good So one. if you want to see it and not feel it, the OR is kind of a neat place to do it. Oh, okay. Write that too. If you want to see it but not feel it. These are good. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, awesome. <laughs> All right. So I kind of try in these sessions to go back and forth between like, the, the feels like we were just talking mm -hmm. about and then like the more like mechanics of your job. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, like your shifts, like the hours that someone could imagine working. So once again, you're probably going to have to speak to me about like EMT, paramedic, um, if they're different, and then surge tech and first assist. So kind of talk to me about when can someone expect to work? Is it shift hours? So around the clock, what are your hours like? Maybe like some paid time off, like talk through all that kind of package with me. Um, Jeremy, you want to start us? Sure. Um, so entry level EMT coming in, you know, fresh out of school, uh, you're probably going to work uh, 12 hour shifts. Uh, generally, uh, we work 30, uh, basically three days, one week for the next. So it's like 36 hours, 48 hours, you know, so but it's 12 hour shifts. You, you basically work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the next weekend you're off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it kind of distributes the weekends and distributes uh, yeah. the, the days, but generally it's 12 hours. Uh, we have shifts that start at 5 AM, 6 AM, 7, 8, 9, 11, and 1 PM. Uh, and then again, at, at night, we have the night shifts, you know, that start at five, six, seven, oh. uh, eight, nine. Um, so you're generally working 12 hours. Somebody who's been here a little bit longer, uh, they might work themselves into a 24-hour shift. We have uh, out in the Clare, Bluegrass, Eldridge, and Clinton operations, we have 24-hour shifts. So they basically work 24 on, 48 off. Okay. Uh, so those are a little bit slower operations. Uh, they might they might do, you know, one or two calls in a 24-hour period, uh, where in our metro, our busy metro, it's nothing for us to do 100, 130 calls a day. Uh, in our metro area and that's split up between about seven ambulances or so uh five at night so it's very busy in the metro that's why they're only tw uh, 12 hours we used to do uh 16 hour shifts when i started we did 16 hours overnight um which was still too long yeah because uh, you're running yeah. pretty much from the time you get in to the time you go home uh, that's you're brutal running. So for yeah. me, students, if we could stop the car surfing, we could make sure that <laughs> car they surfing, have no time car surfing for would help. other things. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Yeah, my so 
basically you have the entry level, the 12 hours, you have the 24 hours for kind of the more experienced people that are out in the slower operations. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad's actually, I call it his retirement location out in LeClaire. So he does 24 on 48 off. Uh, he's not, he's since went part-time. So he's really part-time now, but um, he, he works in that slower operation or did work in that slower operation where he did one call a day. Oh, yeah. um, and then in my position, so I'm, I'm a fleet manager. So I ski Monday through Friday, eight to four, um, eight to five, eight to six, eight to seven. It's not ever four. I'll put it that way. It's never four, and we're ever also on call for two weeks at a time. Uh, mm-hmm. So for two weeks I'm on call. I pretty much get called in if we have a structure fire or a, a, any accident with more than two patients or. Uh, mm-hmm. med force flight anything like that the manager on, in on call gets sent to the scene to assist uh, where they might have to get more ambulances in or whatever the case is uh, and then also we're on call so as a manager we're uh, if we run out of ambulances then we get called in to go on calls so okay okay all right hey, and Jeremy then, uh, okay. I actually have a question um, because yeah. students don't think about it and my son is an EMT uh, so I'm a little bit familiar with some of that. And he talks about having to travel. So he's gone up to Mayo yep. and University of Iowa on there. Can you talk a little bit about how that fits into shifts? Because that sometimes is a little, I mean, that just driving up to Mayo can be a 12 hour. Yeah, that's a, that's a good 10, 12 hour. Yeah, depending on how uh, the weather is. Um, yep. So we we do, uh, as a, an annual service, we cover most of Scott County, almost all of Scott County. Um, so we handle all of the 911 calls for, 406 square miles of 456 square miles of Scott County. Uh, we handle all the 911s for that. And then we also handle all the non-emergent transfers. Uh, and that's where you're kind of talking about. So if a patient uh, comes into the ER here uh, in Davenport, but uh, needs a transplant that was only done at the University of Iowa or only done at the, uh, Mayo or, or only done at University of Wisconsin, uh, Chicago, uh, Kentucky, we'll go pretty much uh, for the most part anywhere. Uh, we will look at, you know, distance and, you know, should the patient be flying, that kind of stuff. But uh, if they call uh, and need to go to the university or need to go to a Mayo Clinic or uh, or anything like that, that's uh, what we do. We take them to wherever they need to go. Makes sense. But it's just stuff you didn't, I don't think about that. You know, you guys just take care of it for us. So I didn't think about it. Yep. All right. Wow, that's <laughs> wild. Okay, Darce, do you want to tell us a little bit about shifts and hours and stuff? <laughs> I'm going to focus more on the surgical technologist part of it because that's really the starting ground. Um, So there's first, second, and there used to be a third shift. Now that's covered by call. So first shift is anywhere from 6 a.m. to 3, or you can do 10 hours or you can do 12 hours. 12 hours is usually about the max. Um, But if you have call that day, it can turn into a 24-hour day. Um, Call... Depends a little bit about your seniority, and um, it's usually one to two days when you're starting out, maybe every sixth weekend. Um, It's different when you work for a hospital versus a surgery center or um, a specialist like a plastic surgeon's office. You probably wouldn't have much call. There's just, it's very versatile job. But working in the hospital, I would say you probably work eight to 10 hours a shift, and then you can work anywhere from 40 to if you're really ambitious or a case comes in that you just can't pull yourself away from, um, you can, you know, work up to 24 hours. Wow. Okay. Um, So tell me a little bit about Darcy, like, when, so you're a surge tech or even maybe more so even in the position that you're in now, what do you do besides what you're doing in the OR over the patient? Like, how do you get to that point? Um, what so, kind of prep is there? So as a surgical first assistant, especially with ORA, I have some really cool perks and different things that I get to learn. So um, casting, I can do splinting. I can do small office procedures. So if you get bit by a dog and you don't need surgery, you can come to me and I'll wash out your wound and and close parts of it if I need to. Um, ORA has two surgical centers that are connected directly to it. Crow Valley Surgery Center in Davenport and then um, QCSC, 
which is in the bottom of the Moline Clinic. So if you walk in and you have a horribly shattered ankle, you might just go right down to the to the OR. Mm -hmm. um, my, my basic duties are, I have a lot more pain, pain, patient interaction now. Um, I run a wound clinic on two days out of the week where you come in with your fresh um, um, incision. I check it for infection. If you need your stitches or staples removed, I do that. Um, if I need a consult with a PA or a doctor to come in and look at you, I'll redress it and kind of get you to that next place where you need to go to physical therapy or get casted or it could go a million different directions. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. So you kind of have that anonymity when you get to do those yeah. like wound clinic days and stuff and then you still get those OR days that I know you said that you like also so that's cool I'll be there <laughs> as soon as we're off the call I'm going right to the OR oh I so. thought it was a body part you were holding in your hand oh it's my, my hand. gosh you just scared me I thought it was like <laughs> one of those like let me teach you about a body part things holy moly <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> did you see my face I reacted um wow okay that's really neat so I want to go back to Jeremy for a minute. You said something about, or you said uh, about your dad's hours. So is this like a family business? Are you all in EMS services? Yeah, my uh, my dad, he started out, he will soon have 40 years in, in EMS. He's trying to hold out one more year because then I'll have 40 years in EMS. Uh, wow. That was started off as a, you know, back then it was probably not EMT, it was like, EMTA or first response, they, you know, they have first responders, but he's, uh, he's been in EMS for uh, almost 40 years. Um, so. Wow. That is well, so great. You'll have to yeah. thank him from our community because that yeah. is wonderful. <laughs> Holy moly. So we have a question already from a student. Um, and she's asking, what is a class outside of like we have um, at Bettendorf and I think at the other schools too, like medical health classes, health classes that like prepare you for health careers. So besides that or like biology classes that you did take or that you wish you would have taken that would have been helpful with the careers that you're doing. So Darcy, is there any classes that you recommend? I'm going to be terribly honest to your students. I did not have a traditional high school experience. So I didn't really get to do that Scott um, program where it like leads you into it. Oh, sure. Um, you know, your microbiology is huge. If you can, if you're science driven, you can do so much in the health industry. You can go anywhere from pathology to nursing to the chemotherapy unit. There's just open doors. I think that if I were to do it all over again, sciences, um, for my personal position, the healthcare professionals for mathematics was enough. Um, I know a lot of other medical professionals need a lot more math, but I'm not responsible for a lot of drug administration. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much the grams and moles, moles to gram chemistry that sticks sure. with me. It's more, you know easier milliliters and, and cc's versus a lot of math but okay. focus on your sciences right okay that's great anything for you jeremy that any class that you'd recommend or anything yeah i'd have to agree uh, with darcy on the sciences uh, anatomy and physiology is huge, huge. Uh, maybe maybe not uh, at the emt level but the paramedic level when you're when you're pushing medications and you have to understand a lot of the the ins and outs of the human body, A and P is, is huge. Uh, driving, learn how to drive and drive safe. Keep your driving <laughs> record, keep your driving record uh, uh, clean for us because um, if you don't have a good driving record, we won't let you work here. Well, that makes sense. Please continue that. Um, that's <laughs> good. Well, students keep putting questions in as you have them in the chat so we can make sure we're answering specifically um, what you all would like to hear about. Um, so this is something we've kind of been talking about with a lot of our groups. How has um, the pandemic and how has COVID-19 affected um, the work that you're doing? So honestly, Darcy, when you showed us that picture of you guys all, you know, garbed up, I thought like, oh my goodness, are they making them wear that all the time now um, <laughs> with the pandemic? So how has that affected things um, both in the OR and when you're out on calls, Jeremy, like, what does that look like? Darcy, you want to let us go first? I never, I never had a fear, which is naive to say, but because as a healthcare professional, we are inoculated from hepatitis on, 
and you know that you, you are always have an exposure risk. I mean, you're dealing with, with surgical scalpel. You have a fear in your belly at catching something. It's kind of mess up your game. Um, we have to wear two different masks, an N95, and then a surgical mask over the top of it, which can be kind of stifling. Um, but we're like professional hand washers. So that wasn't anything different to me. Um, I love the OR because it's clean. It's the cleanest place you could possibly be during a pandemic. Um, it affected me as far as um, non-emergent procedures. A lot of orthopedics is not emergent. It's, um, it's, you know, it's something that you want to get done versus need to get done. So it did drop that a bit and it made it a little more difficult to schedule cases. Mm -hmm. But the pandemic didn't have a huge, huge effect on me, except for I got to get vaccinated right away. Yay! That was kind of fun. <laughs> good job there. Awesome. Jeremy, how about you guys? I bet it did have a bigger effect for you. Uh, yes, it, uh, you know, we're definitely, we've definitely changed the way, uh, in some ways we've changed the way we do business, but in other ways, you know, infectious disease has always been our out, out there. Um, since 2014, when uh, the Ebola outbreak kind of started and hit, uh, medics actually has a transport team. Uh, we're contracted with the state of Iowa uh, to do highly infectious disease transports. Uh, there's only, it's us in West Des Moines uh, and Johnson County and Mercy in Des Moines. Uh, so there's four of us in the state of Iowa that had we had an Ebola patient, luckily we didn't, but had we had one, one of us uh, would have went and transported them based on wherever they were at, if they were in Eastern Iowa, Central, oh, Western. Wow. Um, so we've kind of been preparing this for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. You know, the Pappers uh, that you, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you guys were wearing Pappers, but it looked pretty similar to Pappers. Uh, you know, the, the full hood, you know, mm -hmm. we've been using those, you know, training on those for Ebola for the last, yeah, for the years. Um, it's just up and uh, I, I suppose it just there's a there's definitely an increased awareness as far as you know we see a, we saw a lot more of it mm -hmm. you know a pretty good percentage that you know over the last several months it got really high you know as far as patient contacts and uh, a lot of patients that we were transported were you know were positive um, but we took you know we took the proper precautions we you know wore gloves wore gowns you know, eye protection, face shields, mask, you know, basically all the protections and all the PPE that we've been using, you know, we've only really had uh, over the last year, we've had two, two employees that got, that possibly contracted it from, uh, from work. And those wow. were both uh, just odd cases that, you know, the patient didn't present uh, to have COVID. So uh, yeah. for me, other than that, PPE. I think our patient, Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's universal. We use it the same way every yeah. time for every patient, whether you have it or you don't. It just becomes commonplace to wash your hands, clean under your nails, put on your face mask, put on your goggles. It's just treat everybody the same and pretend like in your head everybody has something that you could get. So yeah. that made it easier to treat, you know, everybody kind of the same. Oh, that I would sense. agree. Yeah, that definitely makes yeah. sense. Okay, so... um what should our students be doing right now if they're considering one of your careers? I know we talked a little bit about the classes, but um, like a lot of times we have volunteering options like fire department. Um, you know, is that something they should be doing? What else should they be doing right now um, to prepare for your possible careers? Darcy, you want to go first? Get your CNA. If you want a real nitty gritty exposure to body fluids, to the emotions that go into nursing, um, it, or, or and can you take it? Can you take, you know, excrement on your hands? Can you take the smells? Is it? Can you can you witness death and not take it home with you? It's a really great place to start, and there are so many people in there that'll touch your heart, and it gives you a very basic knowledge of medical you know, day to day, putting on gloves, washing your hands when you're done with a patient before and after, making sure that you're protecting yourself and the physical aspect of it as well. You're, you're rolling patients, you're moving patients, you're having to clean them off. It's, it's a good exposure. And 
when I went there, when I went to Scott, I thought it was the prereq of the nursing program. I don't know if it still is. Yeah, it is. But yeah, a lot of us have to work while we're in school too. So if you're thinking about something in healthcare, it's an awesome job. It's super school, work, schedule, life, and you get the exposure. So I think CNAs are, it's the roughest, toughest job, but it's a great way to get a little bit of base knowledge. That's great. Awesome. How about for you guys, Jeremy? Uh, in the field, we don't have really a whole lot of options other than, you know, until you go get your certification. But I, I agree with Darcy. I think a CNA is actually a great spot. You know, if you if you're a CNA in an ER, you're going to see everything that we see. You're going to see. You yeah. Know, there's really going to be nothing that that we, you know, there's there's you're going to see everything <laughs> as a right. CNA. And you might get your hands uh, on it more volunteer. than we do. Yeah. Pro probably. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, that's a good point too. Yeah, I know the CNAs come in there and they they're all you know they're in there doing CPR as a break for the nurses or or us or whoever. So. Sure. Sure. So um, a lot of a lot of a lot of small town fire departments uh, also have uh, kind of the you know entry level like you can go in and be a I don't know, I'm trying to think of the explorer program yeah uh, and that's another good way if you if you can get into an explorer program uh, I know we we've been in uh, talks with North Scott and trying to get something like that going out there mm -hmm. um, the problem is you really we really we want people to be 18 if they're riding on the ambulance right. so right. So just in case um, a student doesn't know, the Explorer program that he's referring to um, with different careers throughout the area, um, they call them like Explorer posts and they are opportunities to explore these careers. Um, so I know like with Bettendorf, we've had students um, mm -hmm. in the recent history who have done mm -hmm. like the fire department Explorer post, um, but there's lots of other ones. Um, and Mrs. Johnson would be your best contact for that. But if any students are interested, let us know and we can connect you with Mrs. Johnson or the right person for those opportunities. But a lot of them, you're right, are, um, you definitely need to be older for them, especially when we're looking at the medical ones. Um, we've noticed that yeah. with our previous students. Ms. Johnson, do you have more to share on that? Yeah, you can start actually in the Explorers Post. Um, Bettendorf and Davenport have really strong fire and police uh, mm -hmm. uh, Explorers Post. You start at 14 and you can go until you're 21. So even after you're out of high school and then you progress and mentor. And as you go through the program, once you turn that 18, they're letting you do the ride alongs. Um, you get explore the equipment and work on some of the equipment. Um, I know with uh, police law enforcement uh, posts and they have both the sheriff and then Bettendorf and Davenport Police Departments on there. You get to see SWAT and the canine units and all of that. And that's similar with the fire department. You As you progress through you can do more and more going through it. We did have a medic program in the Quad Cities, but we didn't have enough students. So mm -hmm. if you have students and uh, Ms. Rader uh, is something to um, talk to your students about, if we can get enough students, we would love to have another medic program. Um, I had a student- We would definitely be uh, interested in helping with that. Yeah, and That's they awesome. did a great job uh, about four years ago, I think was the last time we had one. Um, with that program, we actually had from PV some of the students that got to go to a national uh, conference and the medics then and the fire department paid for them to go. So you get additional training for when you're ready to actually get into those careers. So medic is a great, pro I mean, uh, Explorers is a great program. Yeah. My daughter actually got to take advantage of that and did um, through Bettendorf and did the veterinary program. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I thought she did that. And now she's up at Iowa State and she's in the program and she's loving it and it really exposed her to um, to the field. And I thought that was an awesome opportunity that you guys offer. Take advantage of it, you guys. Yeah. If you got something that feels like a passion, jump on it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so guys, don't forget, put any questions in there. We have just about 10 minutes left. Um, a lot of the questions, because we did ask students ahead of time, um, they kind of want to know, um, and obviously don't share more than what you're comfortable with, but with the journey that you took to the career you have now, is there anything that you regret or maybe something that you know now being on this side of it that you could, um, you could have made it easier on yourself? if you would have done something differently. So is there any part of your journey to this that you would change? Jeremy, you wanna go? Uh, yeah, for me, I, I started, uh, took the EMT class and I went straight into paramedic. 
I, I wish I would have maybe worked as an EMT for about a year, maybe first. And then, uh, cause I think it was a little tougher transition just cause you know, you, you're starting a new job and, uh, I actually quit my day job basically after I became a paramedic. So I didn't, when I was an EMT, I was just still volunteering. Uh, but then once I got my paramedic, I quit my day job and went right into full-time paramedic. And uh, I kind of wish I would have worked as a full-time EMT for a little bit. Okay, good, good. You're the first person, I think, that has said something they would have done differently. Everyone else, like, I think we get to a point where we, like, remember all the rosies. You know I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, all the great parts. <laughs> and so everyone's like, no, it's been great. So it is nice <laughs> to know that, like, it's it's okay to think that one part of things could have changed. How about you, yeah. Darcy? Brutally honest. Yeah, let's be Brutally honest. Brutally honest and put it out there. Um I probably would not have had a baby in high school. Well, <laughs> I would have that. done things a little bit different that way. Whoops. Um, best whoops ever. But yeah. it did slow down mm -hmm. and made me an older student mm -hmm. um, getting into my career. So if you can avoid that challenge. <laughs> but I'm that. kind of glad because I love her. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she turned out pretty fantastic. I but would agree. It made it a little difficult, made me an older student, but it made me more driven because it was money out of my pocket versus mom and dad, so. Yep. Well, and you were providing and and mm -hmm. working your way to be able to provide better for her, so. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Poor Taylor. <laughs> Poor Taylor. We had to grow up together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm guessing you might have a story for us on your craziest day or your crazy experience, like a blood fountain or something okay. like that. <laughs> um, so um, because I know Darcy already has one in mind, Darcy, you want to share your craziest day? I don't know if it's my craziest, but it's my favorite story to share. Yeah. Favorite okay, is that good. a word? <laughs> so in the OR, the ceilings are very, very feeling so probably about like eight feet high sure. um your aorta is the biggest blood vessel that you have in your body and it runs right down the middle of you and this younger person had an aneurysm so an aneurysm is a is a weak spot in that plumbing so if you have a hose and you know how sometimes you get kink and it has that little bubble pouch on the outside that's what an aneurysm is a weak spot well when they rupture that's volumes of blood and when you open somebody's belly with a ruptured aortic aneurysm usually it's pretty intense you got suction in both hands and you're ready to rock and roll well this one was very pressurized and it shot up like a fountain we're talking vandermeer park fountain oh. and it hit the it hit the ceiling and it hit the wall or dripping with it you had to have your hands in there and I was holding the order with my hand and it was just one of those um I'll never forget it I'll never ever ever oh forget God. it well it I was forget it now awesome. either, and I wasn't even there it was oh awesome it was such a rush it was awesome and he lived we saved his life oh and good. uh so it was a happy outcome it was just really intense Really intense. Oh, Joe. <laughs> so real quick, I, I have to know, who cleans the rooms then? We have lovely patient texts that come in and help. But with something like that, we're a team. Well, oh, we're a surgical team. We'll come in. We'll do it together. That was something extra super special. Yeah. <laughs> it, the whole room needed oh, down. But it was, it was cool. And wow. then, you know, I have another really interesting case, um, organ harvest. Mm -hmm. I think they're incredible. Mm -hmm. they're, it's part of the job. And you, sometimes you can volunteer to go into them and sometimes you can't. But you will see amazing things in there. You know, somebody's tragic, horrible heartbreak, amazing gift of life. And as a healthcare professional, I always wanted to see how that worked. Mm -hmm. And so being involved in the organ harvest was a really neat um, experience for me. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I didn't even think about that. I just always think of you working with bones and stuff. I didn't even <laughs> think about that. All right, Jeremy, let's hear it. Crazy, most impactful, memorable. Give us a story. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think the biggest thing, impression that I have is 
uh, you will see something different every single day. Um, yes, okay. you'll have the same stuff and yes, you'll have the same patience and, you know, but there's, there's always days that something happens and you're like, okay, I've never seen that before. And it's been, you know, 15, 20 years, you know? So, um, yeah. for, for me, you know, I remember being on street start as a paramedic, you know, I, I was doing it part-time at the time because until I got certified uh, as a paramedic, I didn't go full-time. But so it, it kind of took me a while to, to get released and, and get out on my own. So I didn't really have the big call. And I, I just remember the first uh, first week after getting released on my own. So now here I got my big boy pants on. I'm out on my own as a paramedic. Uh, and I, I remember having a night where it was, you know, I used to work the west side of Davenport at night. So that it was just... Boom, we had trauma alert, stroke alert, cardiac arrest, all back to back to back, triple calls. Wow. Um, that was probably my biggest, you know, I remember that night. And I just remember thinking, how? I, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. I, I didn't have any of it when I was on my my street certification. And now here my my first week and and I have uh, one of everything. Right. <laughs> so, oh, my. So yeah, no joke. That no. does just seem like a lot. I would have needed to sleep for like a week after that. Yeah, we've there's delivered something. babies. I mean, there's you delivered babies. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, oh, yeah, I I think I'm probably at about five or six, um, and I'm well, pretty rare. Well, some of them. Yeah, yeah where, where are you delivering the babies at? Uh, most of them are in the house. Uh, most of them, uh, some of them have delivered prior to us being there. Um, I had one deliver on my cot. You know, we were transporting emergent to the University of Iowa. And, uh, I had one, uh, you know, we went to move her over onto the bed and she delivered on our cot before we moved her over. So, oh, goodness me. We made, we at least made it to the, to the NICU or the, yeah. the OB wing at the university. So. That's true. That is true. It's better than being in the elevator and delivering. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not one for the babies. Fluids and feelings <laughs> are not my jam. Fluids and mm -mm. feelings. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> we got up to Doc Rainer. She when she did her stuff, she says she's delivered over 300 babies. So wow. Yeah. That's so crazy. We'll let her do that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, well, we have just about five minutes left. And you know, Jeremy, you kind of were just touching on something you might say again. Um, but we really want to hear from you. And this doesn't need to be related specifically to the job you're doing day in, day out. Has anyone ever given you a piece of advice that you've really held on to and has been inspirational for you? Or do you have a piece of advice that you would like to share with our students? Um, something really just to, you know, inspire them or keep them going. Um, and once again, doesn't even need to be healthcare related. We just want our students to kind of see that you're real people and you have things that inspire you and motivate you and encourage you also. So Darcy, do you have anything? Uh, words of wisdom. Yes. <laughs> You'll see something new every day in the medical field. Don't give up. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have good days. And I'm talking about test days. And maybe your parents are getting divorced or a car. And that's just part of growing up. Let it shape you. Don't let it break you. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard out there. But if you have something in your head, it's so cliche. But don't give up. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Just keep just keep chugging along and you'll get there. That's great. Thank you. How about you, Jeremy? Yeah, for me, I, I think it's just if you want to do uh, anything you put your mind to it, you can do it. I know that's a little cliche, but um, I, I right. didn't decide to become a paramedic until I was 30. You know, so I went out, quit my day job. Uh, the, you know, I was very comfortable and great job, uh, but quit it after 15 years and, and decided that. Uh, this is what I wanted to do. I don't think it's, it's a never too late. And um, I think anything you want to put your mind to do, you can do. That's awesome. That is so great. Well, um, unless I missed anything, cause I am human. And so did I miss anything that you think is really important to share with students about your career? Darcy or Jeremy, anything? There's a lot of doors. You don't have to pick right away. You don't have to say, I'm going to be a nurse on oncology because you might get into nursing and just hate it. Mm -hmm. There, But you have that medical basis. Mm -hmm. So if you get into a subject and you're like, oh man, I'm pigeonholed. You're not. Medical can take you so many different directions mm -hmm. and so many different specialties and just get your base education and go from there. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I I. I think uh, as an EMT or as a paramedic, 
uh, it really is a, a stepping stone into, you know, whatever you want it to be. Uh, we have many EMTs and paramedics that started off as EMTs and paramedics, and now they're physicians' assistants. Uh, we have lots of physicians and surgeons and chiropractors and, you know, people that, you know, a lot of pre-med students, they go get their EMT and they go get their paramedics So they because they, they have to have patient contacts and patient contact hours. And so if you're looking at anything in the, even nursing, you know, anything in the medical field, uh, you know, EMT uh, or paramedic is a great start because you're going to have that patient contact. And you're going to learn how to talk to patients uh, yeah. well before becoming a nurse or doctor or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Well, that is so great. I am just so thankful for both of you for sharing all this great knowledge and taking time away. I know how hard that is. And I think an OR is waiting for you, Darcy. So thank you it so is, much actually. for doing that. Um, I also want to thank our students, as always, for taking this time um, to listen and to invest in learning more about what your futures may look like. So thank you all for taking that time. If you do, um, you know, go leave this session, students, and you have more questions, um, please let whoever it is on the call that is your building person, let us know so that we can connect you back um, with Jeremy or Darcy so that you can get some more questions answered. And we'll start working on maybe a medic post for everybody um, and get that going. But Thank you all.